Hello, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you're watching a show called Papa's World, of course, named after Papa Hemingway. Each week, we bring in a different local author, and they have a chance to tell you a, a little bit about themselves, but more importantly, about the great books they're writing, okay? And we'll hope you will not only uh, read the book, but buy the book a couple times, all right, and help them with their writing career. I've got uh, Rebecca Colburn with us today. Rebecca, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for okay? having me. And I appreciate it. Now, Rebecca, you're two years in Centerville now, so you're officially a Centervillian. Good for oh, I you. I think it okay. takes longer than that. <laughs> well, I've been here 40 years. I'll tell you what. They tell me I'm a chicken necker to the day I mm -hmm. die, so we just I don't pay any attention to them, all right? Now, Rebecca, tell us about uh, uh, where you grew up and all that good stuff. I grew up in Southern Maryland in okay. Dunkirk, so right. for me, moving to Centerville was an easy transition. I was used to cornfields and farms, and I love it. And like you said, it was a 30-minute ride when you were growing up mm -hmm. to a fast food or a shopping center. Yes. Uh, brothers and sisters? I'm one of four. Okay. I'm the third. Of okay. Four. Any other writers in the family? No, okay. they think I'm crazy. <laughs> That's most people. Think they're, <laughs> they're siblings anyway, not to do with the writing. How about mom and dad? Writers or job? What did they do? No, no. My father was a mechanic. My okay. mother ran a daycare in the home. Um, right. I think that it was just something that was built in me from a very the early DNA age. DNA or something from above said you're going to be a writer in you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was about my daughter's age. She's in seventh grade now okay. when I discovered my love for and writing. And full disclosure, that's to tell the audience that you and your husband and a dog and a daughter, <laughs> most nights, I think, walk by my house and some old man's waving at you. Now that you know who the now crazy old man is. Okay. <laughs> it's safe to return her. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so mom and dad weren't writers, okay? No, no. I think I just, I spent a lot of time reading growing up. I okay. was the child who, when I was sent to bed, would get up and sit next to the night light so that okay. I could stay up reading. What type of book? Nancy Dream type stuff? Or no? no, I always loved historical fiction, okay. which, and, and westerns, which I think is one of the things that influenced the style of books that I began with. Um, and so I just, um, I can remember, I wrote my first book when I was 15. And 15. Okay. I'm at that age where when I was 15, we didn't have computers, you know, I had oh, You literally paper, wrote it. Okay. Pen, what was it about? Know. What was the first one about? Uh, when I was in high school, I was interested in the Middle Ages, so okay. it was a historical fiction. King Arthur and the Round Table type thing? Not no. quite, but okay. along those lines, okay. yeah, so. What, no, any particular author you remember from the uh, early days? I mean, it was somebody that... Shaped you know, I don't that. remember I just any everything. specific authors, okay. but I do remember when I was very young, uh, Laura Ingalls was my very favorite okay. character. Right, okay. um, so I think that that probably had some influence. Now, in the high school and middle school, uh, sports or writing or theater or you said you in your bio you said you're introverted and you don't like to talk about yourself. So what did you do? Just a quiet student in the back of the class? I spent a lot of time reading, okay. whether I was right. on the school bus right. in the lunchroom. That was your world. Well, <laughs> yes, I spent a lot of time just walking alone through the woods okay. thinking. So yes, I some people don't enjoy being alone, but I found um, I always have enough thoughts well, have in my siblings, head to keep so me entertained. You needed to get away, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Now, how about you, you? When you leave high school, did you you said a little different career path, perhaps uh, minister. I counseling? had thought about some sort of a ministry or counseling. Um, I still have a heart for um, anyone who's hurting, and one of the purposes of my novels is not only to bring history to life, but through those stories to share spiritual themes that can encourage and guide people and draw them into a closer relationship okay. with God. Now, uh, writing while you were in, was it Washington Bible College? Mm -hmm. well, were you writing then or full-time student? Well, at that focusing? time, between writing and um, working, it was very difficult to write. Okay. But unless I'm writing, I'm not happy. So right. I've always had to squeeze in a little bit of so time for that creativity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were writing, but you were writing while you were on a little different path. Okay. The only time I took a break from writing was when my daughter was very young, okay. and it just wasn't. You didn't have time. It was wasn't going to work out, right? So we get out of high school, we go to Washington Bible College. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Well, for a long time, I was busy with the real life drama mm -hmm. that takes over and okay. trying to find a way to survive and to hold on to who I was. 20 year old trying to find out how I make it in this world type thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, and a lot of other things took place too that redefined who I became. 
and um, a couple of years ago I met my current husband mm -hmm. and we married and going through that process was very healing for me mm -hmm. and um, after we married we uh, went to Wyoming to visit his parents they okay. had recently moved out there and so not only you know the interest that I had when I was young in westerns um, and history so and then so driving out, out there, there. Yeah. We, we went to um, Yellowstone National Park oh, yeah, yeah. and I had felt like I wanted to start writing again yeah. but I didn't know what my story would be about I just was at a place where I had no really good ideas and while we were at Yellowstone camping my husband left the window open in the camper one night and I didn't realize that I thought it was really just that cold out yeah, yeah. and I couldn't get back to sleep when I woke up and so as I was laying in bed all these ideas for the first novel through every valley flooded into your brain. just flooded into okay. my brain and so my husband will tell you the 27 hour ride home <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, oh no you're silently writing, writing oh, you're notes writing. Okay, I thought you were tell <laughs> he's story. like he was all alone on the oh, ride yeah. home because i was lost in my own world now you think that was a combination of the environment you were in or just i think it was a combination of things i think it was where a time in life i think that there are many aspects that come into writing and one of them is emotional maturity and i think i had reached a place in my life where I had sorted through a lot of the things that I needed to understand okay. about who I was, about mm -hmm. life in mm -hmm. general, and about God's relationship to us and to some of the hardships that we face in life. And that combined with the environment of being out west in Wyoming, in, Wyoming, okay. in Montana, yeah, I just, it was very inspiring. I haven't been to Wyoming, but I've been to Montana. Tell me, what were, the, what were the things that impressed you most? Just the sheer physical beauty or the open plains? The openness okay. is incredible. It's yes. amazing. Well, the name of my series is Of Wind and Sky because okay. when you're in Wyoming, that's so much of what you have. That's all you it's see, It's amazing too, it? how yeah. windy it is. Okay. Um, but I was very grateful, actually, as much as I love the beauty, getting back home, Back to, these uh, to the trees. Oh, I missed the green. trees. Mr. Green, yeah. <laughs> it's like forests. It yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're out on a va It was a vacation. Mm -hmm. you're, and all of a sudden, I'm ready to write. Okay, mm -hmm. it, it got. You're ready. Now, on the 27 hour trip or whatever it was, did you finish a book or what did you do? Mostly Outline I was book? hammering out ideas, okay. creating um, the characters mm -hmm. and the plot line in my head. One of the things I do is do like a psychological profile of who the characters are going to be so okay. that their behaviors and actions and the dialogue are consistent through the story. I hope you had a good radio for your husband. I mean, did he get a, so he could listen you to know, you? You know, he might have been listening you know to the radio. You know I was. I was in my own world. Okay. Well, tell <laughs> us about this first series then. Go ahead. Tell us the titles and what we're, we're talking about here. It's a three-book series, and the first book takes place partially in Annapolis and partially in Wyoming. They're set during the time period after the Civil War, during the Western Movement, when people wanted to start over again and build a new Very life and, and leave the past behind. And... Um, each of these books is about a different set of characters. It focuses on different personalities and different storylines, but each of them are connected. Most of the characters know one another, and it builds chronologically from one story into the next. And again, each one has a very personal message. Okay, well, say, um, let's do this. Let's start for the first one. Tell me what that personal message was in 30 words or less. <laughs> I mean, what are we basically, book one's basically about what? Book one is about learning how to forgive when you've been deeply Bad hurt. husband in this book, I, I, I yes. think I read it again. Yes. Uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Um, well, I went through a difficult experience of my okay. own, and using that experience of learning how to move beyond the past mm -hmm. and not let it hold you back, how to learn to trust again, not only other people, but God, and to learn about yourself in the process, you know, we all have things within us that we sure. need to admit and Somebody change. needed a fresh start here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in, in that story, you have the woman with a fresh start. Now, the, the male character in that story is a Civil War veteran who uh, wants to leave his past behind and start over in a new place. Trouble and guy. Yeah, yeah, he's in a low place in life, okay. you know. Uh, it's and just bringing not her down working with, out. With it. Not, well, yes. you tell me. I haven't read it. No, her okay. husband passes away early on, and so she meets um, Rob when he moves out to Wyoming to okay. build his new life. But he's faced a lot of hardships and struggles too, and they meet at the perfect time where they're able to help one another okay. continue okay. the process okay. of healing and growth. So it's a positive. To learn it's a positive how to message. trust again. Okay. Yes. All right. yes. Now, give me the age group for that book. I would say high school into adult. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we want to get it, how can I get it? 
They are available locally at um, the Vintage Bookstore and the New Center in Easton. You can also buy them at the Chesapeake Trading Company in St. Michael's. And they're also on Amazon. You can get the paperback or Kindle. And they're available on Barnes & Noble. So Mark easy to get. As easy well. to easy get. To get. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so book one, two, a man and a woman kind of starting all over, and they help each other grow. Okay, mm -hmm. good positive ending on book one. Yes. Okay, yes. how about book two? Now, book two is interesting because in book one, one of the things that happened was her husband, before he passed away, was unfaithful to her. Okay. Book two is the redemption story of the young woman who was involved in that relationship because God has a plan for everyone. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, we're never beyond his reach. We're never beyond forgiveness or love. So this is her story of moving beyond guilt, shame, um, humiliation and learning that she can be a whole person. And in this story, the Civil War veteran had experienced um, a lot of shame as a soldier. He wasn't made to be a soldier. Okay. And so he found himself in a situation didn't work out. Didn't work out. that he really just, he wanted to desert. And in his attempts, he ended up being wounded and having to experience an amputation, which if you studied the Civil War, was they a were, very they weren't pretty. They weren't prevalent pretty. problem. A yes. bottle of whiskey and a saw and hold on now. Yes, right? many, yeah. many men lost limbs as a result. So the woman who, make sure I get this right now, mm -hmm. the, in book one, uh, a woman's husband is unfaithful to her. Book two, we meet the woman who was mm -hmm. involved in that. And this is her. Do both women do we, deal with each other in the book two or not? They meet and they have to find their own way of forgiving okay, one okay. another. Right. There's healing involved in that as well. Okay. And we end up on a nice positive healing note in book two? Or? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Yes. And, Always. Ag and again, we can get that at the local bookstores, mm -hmm. Amazon, okay, Barnes and Noble, whatever, and that's easy to get. Okay. Mm -hmm. Book three. Now, in book two, oh, man. see, each one leads sure, into the me. next. Yeah, the man that she really wanted, she didn't feel she was good enough for. Okay. She was afraid if he knew the truth so about her. So one husband her, dies, she gets another husband who helped. Or we, or we were talking about now the woman cheated. Two, yeah, yeah, each one is about a different set okay, of yeah, characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Vivian is the woman in the first book, right. and her husband passes, and she meets Rob. In the second book, the female character is Annette, and the young man that she ends up with is Jesse. But before she... Um, finds a relationship with him, their their relationship begins as friendship. Okay. He um, had a scar on his face. He was very uncomfortable with himself, and she's very beautiful. So he never thought that he, she would be interested in him, but because of her past and the shame that she carries, they both had to let go of these uh, negative feelings sure. about themselves. Sure. But the man that she really wanted in the beginning was named Brian Hunt, and mm -hmm. he didn't understand why she rejected him. Okay. And she didn't feel she was good we enough. We know it was yeah. because okay. of her sense of shame. Uh -huh. So the third book is his story of healing and growing beyond his experiences. He had lost his wife while he was away fighting in the Civil War. He had moved to Wyoming. He met Annette, and he doesn't understand why she rejected him. He ends up meeting a young woman who um, is trying to build a new life also. I think many of us are. Sure. And we all are, to the day you die, right, I think. Yes. She had come to Wyoming because she had a fiancé who um, wanted to punish her for backing out of the relationship because she found out that he was unfaithful. And so he was trying to take her daughter, or not her daughter, excuse me, her, her sister, okay. away from her, saying that she was unfit as a caregiver. Her parents had died. And so now she is the primary caregiver for her sister. And so if you want to hurt her, you take away what matters okay. most, which right. is her younger sister. So she was trying to get away and build a new life. And that's where she meets Brian. And this book um, explores the relationship of Brian with the um, African Americans. Um, throughout In Wyoming. Yes, yeah, because okay. again, there were many of them who went to start their own lives okay, in the get belief away from the East Coast and mm -hmm, get out, okay. that you don't have the same north-south kind of right. issues okay. out west. Although many of that, you know, the people who moved to the west were originally from the north or the south, so all of the same issues follow. Sure, sure. Um, but this explores his transformation of learning to let go of his early um, perceptions about who African Americans were as a slaveholder and learning to know them as people and realize and the that African we Americans are all equal. In Wyoming were free men post Civil free. War and what 
holding having ran, being ranchers some or of them were or? many of them were hired as um, domestics were, okay, okay so domestics okay so all th uh, that series ends mm -hmm. when it ends it ends on a positive note? But it ends with oh. a very positive note oh, that brings okay. all of the characters from all three books right. together. Okay. If I was to ask you if uh, mom's out there watching this and says, hey, wow, that sounds like pretty interesting stuff. I mean, all the di human dynamics are pretty well. Mm -hmm. What lessons would kids get? When I, when I say kids, you said high school. If a high school girl read these books, what, what were the lessons you'd want them to get? I want young girls and I'm, I'm the mother of a, a seventh grade daughter, daughter. Yeah, maybe and so daughter. she is daughter, a great sure. inspiration for me as I'm writing I think about not only my life growing up but now how can I take the lessons I learned and teach my daughter in a better way I want her to know who she is isn't dependent on what she looks like um, we all make mistakes and we have to learn from them the important thing is always I tell her all the time mistakes are learning opportunities sure. they're gonna happen you're gonna grow we learn from them and we yeah. grow and in the end, life will let us down. It will be full of disappointment. Friends, um, men, we will know disappointment. We will know heartache. But in the end, if our identity is rooted in God and our hope is rooted in God, he will never let us down. And whatever paths we walk, we never walk through them alone. Okay, so if you have a strong, for the kids, or the younger audience, if you have a strong set of beliefs, believe in yourself, you're going to get punched in the stomach occasionally, but guess what? You can bounce back and move on. Okay. The adult reader, same lessons or more? Well, I deal with a lot of adult issues as well, okay. but I write about it in a sensitive way that I think... Um, what type of adult issues? I mean, divorce? Well, there's mm -hmm. divorce, and you have... Um, all of those interesting dynamics that come in between a husband and a wife, between men and women, between men and women. But in the first book, um, one of the things that he's overcoming is a past of struggling with prostitution as a weakness. Okay. Right. Um, during the Western movement, it was a great opportunity. They had the towns called Hell on Wheels sure. that came in as These the railroad men going west and there was women being in, built, sure. and it was a great temptation. And I think it's something that. Um, it's just a part of life. We have to learn who we are okay. and how to manage the temptations that we have and overcome them to be a better person. So the nice thing, adults and high school, late middle school can read it, and there's lessons to be learned by both, right? Mm -hmm. Now tell me, uh, research, what did, how'd you do? I mean, you go to primary sources or read it? Where did you? Why Everywhere. You, okay, <laughs> give us some example. Did you? You're riding in a car coming home, okay? Yeah. Where, would you spend a lot of time in uh, libraries doing research? Or libraries what? are a great source. The internet has so much okay. out there now. As I'm writing about um, cattle ranching, obviously I grew up in Maryland. Didn't I know a lot about. Don't know it. a lot okay. about cattle ranching. So you know you can discover so much on the internet, and just sometimes I would spend up to an hour or two researching for what would only be a paragraph okay. in my novel, but I wanted it to be authentic and accurate and so it's important to me to do the legwork and put that effort into it so that in the end what I have um, is worthwhile. Post-Civil War America, what was the biggest surprise you found when you did your research? I mean, I didn't know there were a lot of African-American uh, ranch hands or domestics in Wyoming, you know, just you mentioned that. I mean, did anything really surprise you? I don't know that it was a surprise, but one of the things that struck me is just how much we are shaped by the past. Okay. When the Civil War ended, it didn't end. And Probably there's still hasn't so ended, much, right? in, yeah, I was getting yeah, ready to say, yeah. there's so much um, impact that has rippled out that affects us even today. And it's amazing when you think about the conflict of the Civil War, how you had families, friends, um, divided that when the war ended you went back like one minute your enemies one minute your friends sure, again sure. and you can't let go of that um, so I think a lot of that has influenced the way our nation has been shaped even up until today we spoke with a previous author who's written a book and uh, we, we talked about this off the air talking about what the war brought to the home front and the, you know we all know about Rosie the River but we don't mm -hmm. realize but and most of us don't stop and think I never did Hey, during the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. families and wives were, you know, roles changed, expectations changed. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously after the Civil War, right, a lot of things changed, right? So, uh, I mean, does that come out in the book at all? Just about the, is there a, ch is there a change in thing? You know, post, uh, let's take the 1920s in America, 
I mean, women demanding, hey, we get to vote too, right? We're going to wear what we want to wear. We're going to smoke a cigarette. We might even have a shot of bourbon occasionally, right? I mean, do you see that type of thing happening after the Civil War? Does that come out in the book at all that our role is changing? A, a little bit. Yeah. I think a lot of roles were redefined during the Civil War as most of the men went off to fight and yeah. many of them never returned. More responsibility fell on the shoulders of the women at home to manage things. And as they discovered a new sense of independence, that, of course, shaped the expectation that they had of the world around them. Sure. Strong women in the book? Sounds mm -hmm. like they were. Yeah. Yes, and you know, I think it's important, you know, we don't always feel strong, mm -hmm. but as we make decisions and as we face the trials, that's where we find our strength. Uh, kids in the book, the women who are your uh, main characters, are the children like your child, I mean, you know. Uh, most of the characters are young women in their okay. 20s. Oh, okay, young women in their 20s. Now, speed ahead, what, what follow this from your pen? Writing more books or what? what yes, I've recently started a new series. Uh, it's going to be. I know you don't want to give a lot away, but give away what you can. <laughs> it's going to be a two book series, okay. and it's going to be set in the town of Centerville, right here. Post Civil uh, War again. During the Civil during War. During the Civil War, okay. It begins in April of 1861 with the fall of Fort Sumter. Okay. And what I want to do is bring that history to life. If you had lived here in Centerville during the Civil War, what would it have been like? How would you have decided which side to enlist on? How would that have affected every aspect of life here? And many families were divided. Um, quite a few families in and when you say divided, some County. Some people like the North and some people like the South. And that's my story is going to be yeah. two books, one from the point of view of a brother who joins the Union mm -hmm. and the other who joins the Confederacy. Okay. And so it will develop politically both perspectives on the war, as well as looking at the personal elements of how it, it shaped the people at that time. And again, that influence has continued to affect us up until now. The research you've done so far, what would, if I was to be in Centerville during the Civil War, would I say how different would it look, or have you got that far into it yet? It would have looked very different. Okay. Um, of course, obviously, between the 1860s and now, there's been a lot of development. It was very rural. And, and the old courthouse was there, The right? old courthouse okay. was still there, yes. Okay. In fact, there was a time when the Union soldiers set it up as barracks for a while. The old courthouse here, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a Union barracks. Mm -hmm. Oh, Louis Judge Ross will jump well, out the they, window. Well, they came <laughs> in and... Uh, Just took it. Yes. Um, well, Queen Anne's County had such strong Southern leanings that just as Lincoln had to secure Baltimore, um, the Eastern Shore in Queen Anne's County also occupied, right? had occupied? to be occupied okay. in order to maintain his authority. Were they, Rebecca, I know nothing about this. Did, were the Union troops here throughout the whole length of the Civil War? Or yes, and in okay. fact, um, one of the things I learned that I didn't realize was during the war, um, there was something set up called provost marshals. It was basically a military rule. Okay. So your local authorities were replaced by military authority. Oh, so you had a major running center. So, yeah, you had, no longer did you have that kind of local sheriff. Okay. You had a provost marshal who was assigned. Who might have been from New Jersey or New York? Mm -hmm. or, yes, okay. Many of them um, were local. Okay. And again, because you were in a border state, you had people who were divided and which side they were going to go on. And in the beginning, the war wasn't about slavery. It was about states' rights right. versus preserving the Union. And so people were influenced to choose on either side and sometimes, again, from within the same family. It might have made, might have made uh, Thanksgiving dinners very difficult, right? If one's wearing a Confederate uniform and one a Union uniform. Question, you're going to use Bill Turpin's Turpin Lane? Is that in part of it? If I'm giving away too much, just cut me off. Bill has agreed to let me use okay. Locust Hill as the setting for the story and All to right. use his name. It's a purely fictional story, sure. but it will be set there um, so that will be the house. Hill, His house be the will house. be the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody, let me go back to the question. Besides, the old Coors House was here. Any other differences? I mean, it's still a farming community, I assume. Mm -hmm. Was the courthouse a big gathering for, you, as your research said that? Yeah. Well, the courthouse green, just as it is now, okay. was often a place where people Everyone gathered. Everyone showed up on a Friday or Saturday night. Well, I think there was a strong sense of community. Okay. I mean, I think we still have a lot of that here in town now, but it was much stronger than when you didn't have as many things pulling you in other directions. You didn't sure. have the TV to flip sure. on. You 
you had one another to sit and, and talk Just to. Chew the fat like us old guys mm -hmm. do at Dunkin' Donuts, all right? Okay. It's a good thing. So for Centerville people in Queen Anne's County uh, people, the new book's going to be great, right? Because it's going to give you a look in the uh, Civil War, uh, Centerville, right? And some of the things going on. Slavery here in Centerville, have you found any of that research? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, it was very prevalent in this area. Again, in Queen as, Anne's County, okay. Yes. Um, as an agricultural community, of course, you, need workers. you were dependent on slave labor. Sure, sure. And so it was. there was a generally understood order of things. And so it was, um, that was part of why Maryland was actually more associated with the South. Okay, because of the ag and all that stuff. All right, hey, I can't wait to wait those. Have you got titles for those books yet? I do. The oh, series is going to be called My Brother's Flag, okay. which of course begins with the two brothers. Two brothers. Okay. And uh, the first book is going to be called On Grounds of Honor, and it All is right. about the brother who enlisted in the Union Army. Now, more strong women in these books? Yes. His wife is the female character in the story, and of course she um, has to walk through this process as he decides in the beginning when Fort Sumter falls, which side is he going to go on? How okay. is she going to support him? And when he leaves, she's left at home on the farm. Um, so she has to run the farm? Yes. Okay. With her father-in-law. Oh, with her father-in-law. Okay. <laughs> Which takes it to a whole other level of devotion. Oh, Lord. Father-in-law's already in-laws. <laughs> it's a test, right? Okay. Well, and one of the things I do is develop her relationship with the slaves there and, again, bring out that human element of equality and um, just the relationships that can be built that surpass some of the cultural expectations. Oh, that's going to be great. Matter of fact, I want you the first copy you get through right into my screen porch, right? Mm -hmm. Now, look at Rebecca, our time is about up. So, let's, before we go, let's do this. Remind everybody of the titles of the first three books and where they can get those, please. The series is called Of Wind and Sky. The first book is Through Every Valley. The second book is called The Whisper of Dawn. And the third is As Eagle Soar. And they are all available on Amazon as well as at some local bookstores. Okay, stores. and great uh, books, uh, second part of middle school all the way through adults. My daughter, yes. um, I encouraged her to read the second book because I felt like that one was most relevant for her at this time as she's very influenced by boys. Good, well, that is <laughs> Rebecca, here's the bad news. The next 10 years, kid, you're done. You're done. Okay. Uh, and the important thing is a new series coming. You have a date, you think, a year away? Mid-July oh, of mid -July? this summer. Yes. Well, we'll get you back when the new book comes out, all that right? That would be and wonderful. we'll do that type of thing. Now, you last thing is you sent me a great little bio page and a web page. Remind everybody if they want to find out who you are, what you've written. What, what's that? I site? have a website, and it's my name, Rebecca Colburn. Okay. Dot Weebly dot com. You just have to make sure you spell my name with and a do, K. And, and do me a favor. Do the Rebecca. Spell the first name, last name, and everything. Go ahead. Well, and my name is here on my books. It's R E B E K A H. C O L B U R N and Weebly is W E E B L Y dot com. Okay, and great stuff. I mean, it's a bio stuff, what you're working on. Now, was that interview so bad? Was that bad? I wasn't too bad. Good, okay. <laughs> Rebecca, thank you for being with us. I really thank appreciate you so it. Much. I look forward to the new books, all right? They're thank great. Uh, my name's Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV and Papa's World. We've had Rebecca Colburn with us, who has some delightful books out and more good stuff coming to you, Queen Anne's County folks, about Centerville during the Civil War. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.